Hey beer geeks, welcome back to the Craft Beer Channel and welcome to our highlights reel of New England 2019. Before you've even seen the film. <laughs> Before you've even seen the documentary that we've been working very, very hard on behind the scenes, we thought, well, beer's super nostalgic, right? Like the flavours and um, particularly aromas yeah, sort man. of trigger the brain and uh, very closely tied to memory. Exactly. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go back through our favourite moments and uh, indeed our favourite beers, some of which you'll be able to predict, some of which you might not be able to, uh, and talk you through what happened because it's going to be about another month yeah. before our content from that amazing journey starts hitting the channel. I thought the film was over, Johnny. I, I've, I've got the post-holiday blues, so when you <laughs> turned up with a bag full of beer today from our very special New England a, trip... Brought a smile back on I your face. Like, man, thank you. You've brightened <laughs> my day, sir. Well, this was probably... It's probably our favourite beer of the trip. Yeah, I think I definitely drank the mo that the most out of anything, yeah. even in different parts of New England I was drinking. Yeah. So this is, this is Allagash White. So we went to Allagash and had the most incredible experience touring this immaculate, hugely impressive brewery. Yeah, it's beautiful. Not quite as big as I thought, but ten times more beautiful. Mm. Um, and the beers were just stunning. But this was like... This was the beer that was everywhere we turned. Yeah. Uh, in Maine and even in Vermont and to some extent in Boston. It was it was the beer that in every shit bar it was the absolutely best option. Could we say it was almost like their Guinness? It was kind of like their Guinness, yeah. Uh, and it was um, tasting pretty fresh everywhere. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It is like like lemon meringue with orange peel and a little bit of spice to it. It's a really, really beautiful beer. Yeah. Let's see if it takes us back. Damn. Man. It's quite doughy as well. Yeah. Doughier than I remember. A bit like fresh dough. But I remember as soon as we landed and we went to the only Irish bar that was still open in Boston and listened to that god-awful karaoke, <laughs> which you couldn't even slag off because he, he was a vet singing about friends he'd lost. Oh, my God. It was, it was He was an atrocious singer. Emotional and <laughs> terrifying. And Brad and I were just like with our pints, two <laughs> British guys in the corner sticking out like a sore thumb going... Well, at least I got right here. So perhaps the most unusual uh, highlight for me was walking over a lake in Burlington. We walked on water, literally, We literally Johnny. did, yeah. We were the beer Jesuses. So we went to Foam, who have a beautiful, beautiful brew house just on the water in Lake Champlain. Burlington. Lake Champlain. Uh, and then afterwards, like, they gave us a load of cans to take away, uh, and we stepped outside, and they said, you know, the lake will be frozen, you might be able to walk on it. And we walked yeah. down, you're like, yeah, you can definitely walk on this. <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, so thick. we thought, yeah, yeah, whatever, come on, guys, you can't walk on a lake. <laughs> And uh, popped our heads out the door. The sun was setting. It was it yeah. incredible? Incredible light. It was the quality of light. And one then, of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen. Looking out of the mountains. Uh, there were dogs running around. We yeah. were chatting to locals. Who were all uh, drinking Lost Nation, which was a brewery yeah. we didn't track down. But sharing um, some beers, good times. Man, yeah. that was special. Um, and the foam beers were great too. Like they've sort of got two sides of them. They've got the mixed firm side, which was started by one of their founders. Yeah. And then he teamed up with two other founders to form Foam. And those guys were obsessed with the hazy New England stuff. So it's got mixed firm side and hazy side. And all their IPAs were just bang fresh. Quite dank, this one. What's it called? It is, isn't it? Ooh. The fruit that ate itself. That's all the details the fruit that ate itself. you're going to get. Yeah, 7.2% like IPA. It's like a horror movie. B-movie. <laughs> it, it is a um, bit. Um, but the branding was really special. Your oh, eyes lit man. up. It was it was it was so beautiful. It looked a bit steampunk. Their actual yeah. brew house, um, and they work with uh, a guy that designs music festivals. So I think he did Bonnaroo and all these other things. So it was like lots of weird welded stuff together, all very theatrical. And then you went next door, and they had this amazing art space where yeah. they got all of the guys that they got different artists to do all the cans, and they'd had a big show. I think the week before. Um, yeah, it's like a vacant space they're going to take over and turn into more taproom. Yeah. But they just thought, well, while we're doing it, we'll have a pop-up art gallery. So all these artists came along, made some amazing art, and then they're just going to... Smash it down. Take, take the sledgehammers to it. And it was called Time Kills Art, which I thought was quite, quite a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. Allagash. Foam. 
Where's next? Bissell, brother. This Bissell for shizzle. Um, so this is another one where your eyes lit up because <laughs> the branding by Bissell is, is pretty special too. They, I mean, the, my eyes lit up most because they had a bright green truck, which is probably the most beautiful truck I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I like trucks and this was... Uh, this and you like lime green. And I like lime green. Um, yeah, so they do all their branding themselves. I think it was Pete who we chatted to, so he'll be yeah. in, the doc in the documentary and in the video we've done on, just on Bissell. Uh, yeah, he's a talented guy. And they make incredible beer as well. Yeah, again, the, cool. the space was, was really cool, wasn't it? It's was like vast space. Like yeah. as, a, as, a, as a tap, um, it definitely was the tallest in terms of how tall one of them It was so were. high. Like any Incredibly British brewer high. would walk in and go like, I wish I had that kind of space. Yeah. I mean, like the capacity they had to expand, I feel was like yeah. pretty good, right? Because something people don't really think about with breweries is that actually height is really important because... Mm. It's, it's like building in a city. You need, yeah. once you run out of space in it, you build upwards. You get bigger tanks that go upwards. So having a high ceiling is really important and they've got Or downwards, that space. maybe. Or maybe like they should start men. going downwards. That's what they'll have to do in the, uh, the tunnels in London. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, um, the, all the bridges will start, start collapsing because they've, uh, they've dug down like crazy weird mole men. <laughs> Albino brewers that uh, live underground now. You done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, so Bizzle Brothers. So Bizzle Brothers. So we had a really good chat with Pete about queuing, mostly. Uh, the culture of queuing. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge thing in New England, as we experienced at Treehouse. We'll talk about that in a second. But Bizzle had the same thing for this beer, which they're actually canning while we were there. So we're, this is Swish, their dipper. Swish. Um, and yeah, this stuff gets a lot of love, gets a lot of hype, and they have queues of, of hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. Um, when we were there, we were there just before it opened. There was a queue of like five people. But that wasn't for Swish. They weren't releasing it that day. That was just, that was just a Friday. That was happy passerby people. Wasn't yeah, it? Well, yeah, exactly. There was, there there could was be a there in the middle of the day. Flower show going on yeah, next door. Big flower we show. nearly got directed into the flower <laughs> show. We we're like, no, 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 we're going to the brewery. <laughs> Man, I mean, from the nose of that, you think that's going to be really green, mm. really piney, and uh, you know, fruity. But that is just like. Mango juice. So, smoother than the foam one. Smells, if anything, more dank, but on the palate is much it's smoother. It's way dank on that. I think it's great. I mean, it's bitter, but it's not astringent. It's a, a clean, quick it's a bitterness. Control, it's control bitterness. Yeah. And it's all, it's all kind of relative, the bitterness here, because there was zero on that, zero on that. Yeah. Um, That's it. I've jumped in the deep end now on the yeah. swish. Well, luckily, we don't have an alchemist IPA <laughs> in this thing, because then that would just be like punched Ooh. in the side of the face. So queuing, yeah, queuing, man, uh, queuing culture. <laughs> we, I'm not a queuer. Like <laughs> we did, we did our fair bit of queuing on that trip, and it yeah. just it, it it gave me like night terrors about being a child and wanting to go on a water ride or something. Yeah, I mean, you it was I mean? very Disney. Like you queue up for about two minutes gratification. Yeah. Um, so Treehouse, the queue was insane. I was like hassling Brad. I was like, no, we need to get there for ten o'clock. Yeah. Um, and we got there at about 10 past 10 and that was too late. We were there for an hour and a half queuing. Yeah. Um, that was the morning I wanted to go to a crystal shop to buy some uh, <laughs> mystical crystals. Yeah, and I was like, we're not In... buying some mystical crystals. No. We're buying some mystical IPA. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should have just gone to the crystal shop. Well, we might have got some more luck, some more mystical luck. Do you reckon? Right? Just... We could have cut the queue. But we did have some luck in that we did get hold of this. Yes. So they secretly... I guess not secretly. They've, I think they started drip feeding their releases because the hype just makes the queues too big. So this is King Julius. That is one of the almost uber IPAs. It's one of trains, the. It's, right? it's the Cantillon of IPAs, really, King Julius. Um, so it's it's a double IPA version of Julius, which is their six point two percent IPA, which I think is the best yeah. New England IPA in the world. And and they were limiting this to one can one, per person. One person, and we. So when we got to the front of the queue, there were eight left, <laughs> and then there were like eight people sort yeah. of being served at the time. So we were a bit yeah, like, it was a little bit scary. Are we going to get one? But we did. We got two, um, yeah. and then. We bef well, we befriended a, a family, but well, they befriended us behind us. Like yeah. An old guy from New York. He was super into beer, actually, and queuing, seemingly. He loved to queue. <laughs> um, he even brought along his grandchildren to queue. That's yeah. how much he loved queuing. But um, I think he got the last two. Did he get the last two? It, uh, and what colour would you describe that as? I'd, I'd describe that as muddy caramel. If I was buying it's the paint. It's definitely muddy. I mm. mean, if I'd produced that myself at the doctor's office, <laughs> yeah. I'd be very be concerned. On your deathbed, yeah. Very concerned. Um, 
Oh, it smells like caramelly. Uh oh. Has this gone wrong? This has gone wrong. That's like caramelized oranges. It would explain the dark color. Oh my God. It's, it's ridiculously caramel. What's happened to it? It's a badly oxidized can. Cut. So sometimes, Johnny, in life, you queue up for an hour and a half. Uh, you, you pays your money. You make your choice. You get your hive train juice. And you open it up and it tastes like you're eating a, a toffee apple. Uh, you get kicked in the balls. Yeah, you get happens. kicked in the balls. That's what just happened there. I'm hoping that's an isolated case. Mm. But it does happen to every single brewery. We're not going to judge Treehouse too much by that. Um, so this, should, this shouldn't this should taste like toffee. No, that should taste like the best Julius, Julius you could ever imagine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it just doesn't. Yeah. So that's, I think that's a fault at Canning. Yeah. Uh, which I'm surprised at, given the equipment they have. Treehouse! Sort it out. Uh, otherwise, we do love you. You produce beautiful beer. Yeah. And we've got lots of other beautiful treehouse that we we're have. hanging out. Um, so we'll move on to something that's actually supposed to taste of caramel. Um, and that is Luscious by Alchemist. So Alchemist, I think, after Alagash was my favourite brewery. Alchemist was my favourite, definitely. I just, I love the man. I thought he was inspirational. He really was. Uh, uh, the, the, a... sort of the key thing to take away from that was how seriously he cares for the environment. And the shit yeah. that guy has done... Mm. Um, if we don't die in 100 years from global warming, <laughs> as brewers, we should all look at John Kimmich and go, thanks, man. I'll tell you who isn't going to die is John Kimmich. Yeah. In an apocalypse, John Kimmich is going to be here with the cockroaches because <laughs> that guy was like a machine. He was yeah. like a Terminator sent from the future to make us make less waste. <laughs> yeah, so he, he clearly spent the same amount that most brewers of his size would, would spend on the brew kit. He'd spend that on his sustainability practices. Yeah. But yeah, about the beer. So obviously you go to Alchemist thinking, well, I want some heady, I want some focal. Um, and the beer he cracked for us was Luscious. And it's an yeah. English, maybe because we're English and it was an English Imperial Stout. Were we drinking that it's from the pretty tank? Pretty marvellous. I feel like we were drinking that from the tank. We drank quite remember. focal from the tank oh, yeah, and a can good. of this. Yeah, it was good. Chocolate biscuit. Chocolate hobnobs. It's chocolate, just... Dark chocolate hobnobs. Mm. I've gone straight That's into that. I was a bad man at there. <laughs> Unctuous. I'm going to bring the U word out again. It's unctuous. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, I feel like he can sort of turn his hands to all these different styles and just nail them. Yeah, I mean, with all great brewers, you should be able to turn your hand to any style. You should be able to produce almost anything. And the variation, you know, <laughs> treehouse aside, everyone else was doing loads of unusual, interesting yep. styles that we didn't think about. Like Bissell had, they were starting a lager project. They had... You know, their session beer is a rye ale. Foam had their mixed fermentation stuff. Allagash, obviously, they're Belgian-inspired. Everything's all over the place. Mixed firm, triples, doubles, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, Alchemist, he has a great, well, a decent saison. That's, I think that's probably his weakest beer. It's still a tasty beer. Um, and then massive IPAs, massive Imperial Stouts, some great pale ales, and the most sustainable practices I've ever seen in a brewery. Amazing. Um, it's a really diverse place, which is going to be the point of the documentary. Yeah. Having been there, there's so much more going on other than hazy beer over there. And to some extent, I wish, I wish the rest of the world was that way as well. Yeah, it's, it's a real misnomer that that's all they've got going on. Mm. Um, a travesty, I would say, almost. So tune in to our feature-length documentary yeah. when, when Johnny's uh, we're gonna do, done the wills. We're going to do... I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube. We're going to do... So you can do premieres. So what we'll do is, is we'll put it live and you guys can live chat with us as you watch it live. And then obviously it goes up as normal. And we're also hoping to host an event in London. That's not confirmed. We don't know whether that's happening because we're still trying to work out logistics. And we might have drunk all the beer. By we then. might have drunk all the beer. So guys, if you can make it to any of these five, do. They're all 100% worth the trip. So much more varied than you think. And we had some pretty magical times with them. My God, I won't forget this trip, man. And thanks so much for extending it today with this little selection of lovely brewskis. You're very welcome. Cheers, guys.